Hello, algebra students. If you got a little stumped on these problems, don't feel bad. They're not actually review. Um, even though they involve the concepts we've seen before, I'm pushing you just a little bit further. So thanks for joining me. Let's take a look. It says, simplify the left and right hand sides of the equation as needed. Interesting language. Then solve. Now, if you saw this on the GED, it wouldn't say all that. I'm just trying to give you some hints of what's going on here. It would just say solve. But what I want to point out to you is don't forget when we're solving equations, what an equation is. An equation is simply two equivalent expressions. So it's an expression equal to another expression. It's kind of like what you guys think of as a math problem. So two problems set equal to each other. Now that being said, if there's any straightforward math you can do, like if you can obey any of the symbols on either side, do it. It makes your life easier before you start solving. So the way you're going to look at these more complicated equations as we go further and further into algebra is you'll look at just one side at a time, like just the left hand side or just the right hand side, like it's a single solitary problem and do any of the math you know how to do. And then once you've done that, if there's anything else you can do, then you'll start that lovely solving where we move backwards. So let's take a look at this guy. We've got these two sides. Obviously, there's nothing to do over here on the right. It's just a plain old number 42. But if you look on the left, there's some of the simplifying we've been practicing. We know how to add 2x and 5x. We learned that we can combine like terms. It's just like I have two xylophones and five xylophones. I have no idea why I collect xylophones. I'm a weirdo. But nonetheless, if I did, I would have seven xylophones. 2x plus 5x is just 7x. And can I do that? Well, of course you can. You're always allowed to trade out equivalent things in math. So 2x plus 5x is the same as 7x and it's simpler. So I'm gonna write it that way. And now that's equal to 42. And now that I simplified that left-hand side, this sucker's a lot easier to solve. I can see it's just a one-step equation. I just have to get rid of a single solitary number in order to get x alone. So now's the time to start solving. Now that it's as simple as it's going to get, I'm going to work backwards here on both sides of the equation to get x alone. So 7 is multiplying by x, so I will do the opposite. I will divide. And now's the time when I do things twice on either side of the equal sign. It's when I start being disobedient to the symbols. So multiplying by 7 and dividing by 7 cancel because they're opposites. x is alone just like I wanted. And there's the math to do, and you can do it in your calculator. 42 divided by 7 is 6. X is alone. This is solved. Look at the next example. 92 is equal to 8y minus 6y. Again, for us new and struggling students, put that line through that equal sign and examine the sides one at a time. So just examine the left-hand side. Is there any work to do? Well, no, I, I can't make that any simpler, guys. Right, 92 is 92 is 92. But on the right-hand side, that I can make simpler. So if I can, I should. 8y minus 6y, I have eight yaks and I take away six yaks. You guys, my yaks, they play the xylophone. But anyway, I would just have two yaks. So 8y minus 6y is equal to 2y. And that's going to be equivalent to whatever I get on the left-hand side, which in this case is 92. And now that I made the left and right hand simple, like they're not going to get any simpler, right? Nothing I can do with 92. I can't multiply together 2 and y since y is a mystery number. But now that I've made them as simple as I can get them, now it's going to be pretty straightforward to solve. All I need to do is get y alone. So what number's hanging out with y? It's this 2. Let's get rid of him. We'll get rid of him by doing the opposite. He's multiplying. We'll divide. Now we can do that. We can do that disobeying if and only if we keep the two expressions, the left and the right hand side of this equation, the two expressions, 
equivalent by doing the exact same thing. So multiplying by two and dividing by two are opposites. They cancel. I get y by itself, just like I wanted. And you can do that in your calculator, but I forgot mine. So let's see, two goes into nine, four times, remainder one, two goes into 12, six times. If you wanna learn that ninja trick, check out my site division video. I'm not teaching it now, you guys. Site division, super fun. All right, and I get the final answer, 46 is equal to y. Now, that's the same as y equals 46. If that's what the answer key says, don't lose your mind, but it is fine to write it that way. It means the same thing. All right. Next example, five times the quantity of P minus six is equal to 30. Now, we've actually learned another way to uh, tackle problems like this. If you hit it at the experienced or advanced level, you've learned another way, but that's okay. I just want to point out to you that this five here is shoved up against this P minus six on the left-hand side. And we have learned how to simplify things like that. We've learned to do this multiplication. Even when I can't do the addition or subtraction inside, I can still do the multiplication by passing it out to every term. So five times P is five P and five times negative six is negative 30. And that whole thing is now gonna be equal to 30. And we can see now it's a two-step equation to solve. So two-step equations, I work the order of operations backwards. Any addition or subtraction that's not in a grouping will go first. Subtracting 30 and adding 30 are opposites, they cancel. 5p is left on the left-hand side. 30 plus 30 is 60. And... 5 is still hanging out with P, it's multiplying, so I'll divide to get rid of it. That's legal if and only if I keep the two expressions equivalent. Multiplying by 5, dividing by 5 are opposites. They cancel. P's alone. 60 divided by 5. That's my math to do. You can do it in your calculator. But it is 12. You want me to do my site division again? Okay, here I will. 5 goes into 6 once. Oh, here. 5 goes into 6 once, remainder 1, and then 5 goes into 10 twice. Isn't that nifty? It's nifty. Doesn't it make you want to check out my other video? Yeah, you can check it out. You can like. You can comment. You can subscribe. Please, pretty please, tell your friends. Uh, <laughs> right, you guys. Strong work. So this is really where we're headed, and we're going to practice this more and more and more in the next lesson. This idea that you can simplify and solve in the same problem. So you really have to keep your rules straight. When am I doing what? All right. Happy learning.